Brian, how are you this morning? Doing well, Dan. How are you? I'm great. Uh, let me start with uh, the extra points here. Were you on the extra point uh, team with the Bears? Yes, I was my whole career. The philosophy of extra points back then to what it is now, how, why has it changed so dramatically? I think, well, obviously it's harder now. They moved it back a little bit, so the ball comes out a little bit lower, I would think. But we, we still tried to block it back in the day. You know, we our coach would always put in – we work on that every single day for extra, extra point block and PAT, whatever. We always had um, five minutes set aside for special teams to do that before practice. Um, we didn't just stand there. You know, I stood there because I had a guy in coverage if they ran a fake. But we uh, we still tried to block it. But now it's just, man, the kickers are missing them. They're blocking them. They're, it's all kinds of stuff going on now. What do you think of the extra point move back 15 yards? It makes it more interesting. I think it's fun. Um, it, you see more teams go for two now, which which makes the game interesting for me as well. I don't necessarily like it, but it, it's a little bit different than normal. Uh, did you watch the Packers last night against the Redskins? Yeah, I did. That's the only game I watched all day. I was traveling all day, so I caught the second half uh, of that game. Does Aaron Rodgers look any different to you? <sighs> he just... I mean, I think they're asking him to do a, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, there, there are some throws that you don't normally see him make. You know, we're just, we're been spoiled with Aaron because he never makes a mistake. Every pick you see, he throws. The guy makes an unbelievable play to, to make it. Either it's tipped or the guy has to dive to catch it. And now, you know, it's a little different this year because he is under quite. He's, he's under more pressure. He's at. They can't run the football. You know, they're dropping seven, eight guys. So it is a little different. But still, if you put. His numbers for the Bears quarterback, the Bears would be happy as hell. <laughs> the Packers aren't, and Aaron's not, but if you put those numbers for the Bears quarterback, they would be um, they would be ecstatic. Where are the Bears as a franchise right now? That's a good question, Dan. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I think they're going – I'm a huge fan of Coach Fox. I think him and Pace will, will get things changed if they give him a chance. Um, but they're, they're almost back to the rebuilding stage now. I think at quarterback they're going to have to – for the talk around Chicago is they're going to start over again next year. Not start over, but you know Jay won't be there, so they'll have to find a new quarterback. I think Hoyer could be a nice bridge for them for a while. He uh, he's done a good job when he was in there. Would you uh, rather face a great offensive line or a great quarterback? Um, I would say a great offensive line because a quarterback, you know, they can change the calls. They can get rid of the ball fast and make their offensive line look really good. Well, would you rather face uh, the Cowboys offensive line or Dak Prescott? Neither. <laughs> oh, man. They, uh, they're good. I, you know, I grew up a Cowboys fan, so it's kind of fun for me to watch right now. This is, this is like the old days, man. They used to just pound the ball. Um, Dak's a little more athletic than Troy was. But, I mean, to watch these young kids get out there and do what they've been doing. And their defense is playing solid. You know, yeah. they're not great by any means. But they get the job done. Rob Brady has got those guys flying to the football. They don't get a lot of sacks, but they uh, they make enough plays to win games. What did you think of Romo's speech during the week? I didn't see it. I I was watching. I was on the treadmill and I saw part of it. I didn't I didn't hear it though. Um, you know, I, he handled like a man. You know, <laughs> there's not much he can do. I don't I don't know how you can expect to do. And he doesn't expect to be put back in there. You know, our team's on a nine game win streak. I just it stinks. You know, he came in and played great, and no one expected it. But then there's talk about maybe the Bears at him or, uh, I mean, there's, there feels like, you know, because yeah. he's from Eastern Illinois, so I don't know if, if that's going to be a landing spot. He, he's going to have some options there, but I, I just don't know if you go all in on Tony Romo if you're the Chicago Bears. Here we, we talk, I'm on an ESPN show with Wild and Sylvie there in Chicago every week, and they talked about that, and I, I was shocked. You know, I, not that it gets Tony, but I think he's going to be 37 or 38 this year. He's been banged up the last three or four years. Uh, the Bears' offensive line isn't that great. You know, if he can't stay healthy behind that line in Dallas, he may have a hard time in Chicago as well. Uh, just, I, I was surprised to hear that. I think, you know, if you're going to move on from Jay, you got to get a little bit younger. Yeah, that's if you're going to sort of start over, I, I can use uh, Hoyer there and not go all in and invest a number one draft pick or spend a lot of money. So yeah, you're going to have to you're going to have to pay him a salary, which is quite a bit. Yeah, you know, unless they cut him, obviously, you're going to have to trade for him. So there's a lot going on there if, if you're going to try and make that move. He's a Brian Erlocker, the linebacker, former linebacker for the Bears, joining us. Uh, have you ever been in that position where Luke Keekley was the other night? What happened to him? I, I didn't see much of the game. Uh, I saw him. It looked, so at first when I saw the replay, I thought he broke his leg or something because the way his, the face he was making when he drove off of the field, like he looked like he was upset. So I thought maybe he blew his Achilles or his knee or something. What happened to him? 
Well, he suffered a concussion, they said. But if you look at the video, I thought his, he messed up his knee, and then I thought he got the wind knocked out of him, and then they said he was in concussion protocol. And I didn't know if that's how players sometimes react when they suffer a concussion. I mean, he was very emotional. So I don't oh, know if you, you ever, yeah. if you ever felt that way. So, so eventually when I thought, I thought he, I thought his season was over because of the way he reacted. I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to watch this play because I don't like watching the plays where guys get hurt. It sickens me. So I, I just put my hand up over the TV. But then I saw him driving off. I was like, oh, man, this poor guy he's got, must have a really bad injury. But then they're like, oh, he's in concussion protocol. So personally, I've never had that um, kind of reaction. I, you know, I only had one major concussion, and it wasn't – I didn't react like that. I got to stay on the field. So it was uh, – a little different scenario for me than, than Luke went there. I hope he's okay. I'm sure he will be eventually, but um, that was the first time I've seen someone react like that. Wait, wait, wait. You've had one major con- – how many minor concussions did you have? I had a few. You know, well, back in the day, it didn't matter. You know, you, you get concussed. Uh, the, the major one I had, I missed two plays and went back in. You know, it, it was so different back then. Oh, and I may have had it, you know, during games, you, you may get dinged up a little bit. Nothing – just a little woozy after a good hit, but you didn't – Nothing where you needed to come out of game. He's like, whoa, that was a really good hit. And you would keep playing. But are, is it because they tackle differently now? I don't know. I mean, I think it's more prevalent now. And, and people are looking for it. You know, back in the day, they weren't really looking for concussions. Now they got someone assigned to every game to look for concussions. If a hit, there's a big hit, those guys have to leave the game to make sure they didn't get concussed, you know. Um, so it's just different now, the way they, they look at them. The, uh, the show is on Golf Channel. It's a Wilson Golf Reality TV show. It's Driver versus Driver. Tomorrow night will be the finale at 10 Eastern on the Golf Channel. So you're, uh, you're on the panel there, sort of like Shark Tank, where you're going to decide who wins this? Yeah, I'm the expert judge, you know, basically, Dan. I know so much about golf clubs <laughs> and how to make them. <laughs> you know, I, uh, it's been a really fun show, man. So Tim Clark, the director or the president of Wilson Golf, is a guy I met through Kevin Stroman a few years ago. And they asked me to be a part of the show, and I jumped. I was like, heck, yeah, I'd do it. You know, basically people submit their drivers, you know, to, to, to Wilson. It's an open competition to anyone, and they submit their drivers to uh, to the panel. And we go through all these submissions, and we pick the one driver that we think is the best out of all of them. Um, and then they make half a, they get half a million dollars if they win. And then Wilson's going to market their driver and sell it. I do find it interesting sometimes when you play with football players like Eddie George, when I played with him, he's so much bigger than me and so much stronger. And he thought because of that, he'd hit it further he than I did. And, <laughs> and, and he, Eddie was hitting it like 220 yards, and it was emasculating him. Did you ever play with teammates who, you know, big guys who felt like they were going to be able to crush it? Well, I'm pretty big. You know, I feel like I should hit it further. You know, I think the golf is so different in that aspect because you play with smaller guys and they have the, their hips are perfect, they, their t- timing is perfect. And they crush it by you. I'm like, what the hell? You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> six four, two fifty. I should be able to hit it by you. That's not how golf works. You got to have your swing on playing. You got to have your timing right. Uh, it, it's a, uh, it's a little different than most sports. Who humbled you though that you played against? Do you play against pros? Yeah, I play with a lot of pros. And I play with Bubba Watson. I play with Rick. Ricky's not big. Ricky Fowler is five eight, five seven, maybe 140 pounds. And this dude was sitting at 60 yards <laughs> by me. Um, but Kevin Chapel and Kevin Stroman are good friends of mine as well. And they. Uh, they just piss off my ball. It's like their ball flies my ball by 30 yards in the air. And I'll hit a good one and be like, go get that one. Okay. Bomb it right over me. The uh, season finale of Driver versus Driver on the Golf Channel. That'll be tomorrow night at 10 Eastern. Tune in to see how uh, Brian Erlocker's hair looks. How is the hair? Oh, Dan, it's uh, it's good. I need to get a cut right now. It's uh. You know, to have some time on them, I get ready time. Now I got to wake up in the morning and call me like, they woke up a minute ago, I'm going to the gym, but I had to brush my hair first because I didn't want to go look like a freak to the gym. But it's looking good, man. Um, I can't complain too much about it. Can you, can you, could you get a mullet? Could you part it down the middle? I could, do, I could do whatever I want, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's how much hair I can grow now. I can do whatever I want to with my Yeah, but you, wouldn't, my hairdo. you wouldn't be as intimidating if you played now and you had hair, though, Brian. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, it, it was different back then. Back when I played, I didn't want hair when I played because, first of all, I'd be I'd add on five or ten minutes to my get ready time every day. You know, <laughs> two, two or three showers a day when I played. So that's you know an extra twenty minutes a day there. So it's uh, totally different now. It's you know the the easy factor would have been out the window back back then. So if Jay Cutler would shave his head, maybe he'd be <laughs> a little better with his prep time. 
Well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what, you know. <laughs> I, I got no comment. I don't know what there I can't answer that question. I, 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 almost, I almost got you to the line of scrimmage you know, there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn to Cam Newton and say no comment. <laughs> uh, have fun tomorrow night. Uh, great to talk to you again, man. All right. Thanks, Dan. All right. That's Brian Erlocker. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.